un da bajé del tren a Auschwitz. Había persona, una persona que, que decía todos los que no pueden andar, viejos, pequeños, son, tenían que subirse a los camiones. Y así cuando bajamos del tren, ya no encontré más mi hermano, ni mis tíos, ni mis sobrinos. Mi, mi mamá siempre me tenía así, me, me tenía mucho miedo. Y, y mi mamá tenía 40 años, no es que era vieja. Y entonces me dice, neta, iremos también con el, los camiones, porque el campo de Birgenau era a tres kilómetros eh, de, de la estación de Auschwitz. Y así había mucha gente que se fueron con los camiones. Y esos camiones eran directamente, directamente era a la, la cámara del gas. A man walks towards his destination. Four Polish soldiers accompany him, not making a sound or even looking at him. They are repelled by the commander's face, but not because of his features, but because under that human face hides one of the biggest monsters humanity has ever seen. The most curious thing is that this man, now dressed in a simple felt jacket and prisoner pants, until recently wore a luxurious uniform designed by Hugo Boss, decorated with the greatest insignia that Adolf Hitler could bestow on his most faithful men. The man sentenced to death advances towards the gallows, after a court found him guilty of the most sinister misdeeds that a soldier could contemplate. That man, who wears a dead look, without any regret, is Rudolf Haas, commandant of the Auschwitz concentration camp, who had first implemented the deadly chemical Zyklon B in the gas chambers to murder millions of Jews. On April 16, 1947, the Nazi soldier climbed the last stairs of his life to meet the knot of justice, squeezing his neck with the strength of six million innocent victims until the presence of the Auschwitz animal was erased of this land. Join us in a new episode of Military History to learn about the macabre story of Rudolf Haas, the Auschwitz Genocide. Rudolf Haas was born in 1901 into a Christian German home. His father was very strict and a fervent Catholic believer, and he assured that his son was destined to enter the clergy. Undoubtedly, little Rudolf would be a priest or at least that's what his family believed. Later, Haas himself would write in his memoirs, I, Commander of Auschwitz, the following fragment. My vocation seemed drawn up in advance, since my father had made the promise that I would enter religious life. My entire education was founded on the fulfillment of that oath. A deeply religious atmosphere reigned in my family. My father was fanatically attached to the Catholic Church. But contrary to the expectations of his family, who prayed that the youngest of the Haas clan would become a missionary and help bring peace to the hearts of the people, Rudolf gradually lost faith in the Catholic religion and his interests in the military life grew during their teens. In 1916, after the death of his father and behind his family's back, Haas enlisted in the same regiment in which his father and grandfather had served, beginning a military career that would seal his fate, as well as that of millions of people who would die under his orders. In 1918, the young Haas became a political militant within Gerhard Rosbach's Free Corps, a paramilitary organization linked to the brown shirts and made up of 3,000 soldiers, which marked the beginning of the rise to power of a young Adolf Hitler. In 1923, under orders from the then supervisor of the Free Corps, Martin Bormann, Haas and other members of the organization bludgeoned a local teacher to death, as they believed he had accused a member of Haas's group of perpetrating sabotage operations against French supply lines. 
Following a confession from one of the murderers, Haas was arrested and sentenced to 10 years in jail for being the ringleader. Instead, Bormann was only sentenced to one year in prison. After serving five years, Haas was released after a general amnesty was declared in favor of Hitler's followers. Upon his release in 1928, he began working as a manager on farms and farm complexes and joined the Artman League. It was a kind of German lodge that professed the purity of the Saxon blood, and that would later be absorbed by the Nazi party. In the Artman League, Haas met Heinrich Himmler, and thanks to that connection, in 1934, with Adolf Hitler in power, he would join the SS. In November of that year he arrived at the Dachau concentration camp, along with Auschwitz one of the most terrible, and there he began his career. At Dachau, Haas learned SS doctrine regarding the treatment of prisoners, which was brutal, and rose to become first assistant commandant. Before long, he was promoted to lieutenant and was sent to the Sachsenhausen camp, where he served as a ruthless head of guards. On April 27, 1940, the Nazis decided to create a new concentration camp, which was conveniently located between different railway tracks, making it very accessible. This is how Auschwitz-Birkenau was born, a place that in a few months would become the main scene of one of the largest genocides in the history of humanity. A few days after the creation of the camp, on May 1st, Rudolf Haas arrived at Auschwitz, but now as commander, along with a handful of guards and 30 criminals transferred from Sachsenhausen, who would be the first inmates of the camp. The site grew steeply during the 1940s, and became one of the nerve centers for the capture of Jews in Europe. But it was in 1941 that the camp went from being a prison to a killing center. Im Sommer 1941 wurde ich persönlichen Befehlsempfang zum Reichsführer SS Himmler nach Berlin befohlen. Dieser sagte mir dem Sinne nach, der Führer hat die Endlösung der Judenfrage befohlen. Wir Die SS haben diesen Befehl durchzuführen. Er habe Auschwitz deswegen gewählt. Rudolf Haas had been accurate and relentless up to that moment, and that was not going to change. The Auschwitz commander was a perfectionist in his task. He had been ordered to annihilate as many Jews as possible, and so he would. In fact, he was the first to implement the sinister concept of gas chambers disguised as showers, which made prisoners unaware that they were walking to their deaths. In fact, for Haas, death by the pesticide Zyklon B was a gesture of humanity, since it avoided violence and executions. When questioned later about these methods, the cold and calculating Haas would reply, Technically it wasn't that difficult, it wouldn't have been difficult to exterminate even larger numbers. The killing itself took the shortest time. You could dispose of 2,000 heads in half an hour, but it was the burning that took all the time. The murder was easy, you didn't even need guards to get them into the chambers, they just came in expecting to take showers, and instead of water, we turned on poison gas. It was all very fast. So inhumane was Haas on this point, that during the Nuremberg trials, when accused of killing more than 3 million Jews in the gas chambers, the commander corrected the judge and said, there were only 2.5 million, the rest died of starvation or disease. The sinister Haas was methodical. Every day, several trains loaded with 2,000 people each arrived at Auschwitz, and from the entrance they were divided into two groups, those who could work were sent to the labor camps, and those who were very weak were sent directly to the gas chambers. Under Haas, Auschwitz became a death factory, to the point that it was unfeasible without the huge furnaces, which he had built to immediately burn the corpses that came out of the deadly Zyklon B showers. In 1944, 
the commander carried out a huge operation that would bear his own name, Operation Huss. 450,000 Hungarian Jews were deported to Auschwitz, half the country's Jewish population. The mission was truly brutal, and during that year, the gas chambers were killing some 10,000 people a day, the corpse ovens were burning 24 hours a day, and their huge columns of smoke could be seen for miles. The efficient murderous industry that Haas had installed in the countryside was no longer enough, and in order to carry out the genocide, mass executions had to be implemented in wells adjacent to the concentration camps. Finally, in 1945, with Germany under siege by the Allies, Rudolf Haas abandoned his SS post with ties to the concentration camps, and managed to avoid capture by disguising himself in a Kriegsmarine uniform. But after the Allies entered Auschwitz and discovered the horror that took place there, and Haas's connection to it, a manhunt began that led to the capture of the commander's wife, Hedwig. Haas's wife, under threat of losing her entire family, betrayed her husband and confessed that he was hiding on a farm near Flensburg. On March 11, 1946, Rudolf Haas, the animal from Auschwitz, was captured. Although Haas long denied his involvement in the Holocaust, it was during the Nuremberg trials that he finally accepted his role as an indispensable participant in the genocide of the Jewish people. After a long time avoiding statements, Haas said, I commanded Auschwitz from May 1, 1940 to December 1, 1943, and I estimate that at least 2,500,000 people were killed and disposed of there by gases and burns, at least half a million more died of starvation and disease, bringing the total to 3 million dead. The number represents about 70 to 80 percent of all the people who were sent to Auschwitz as prisoners, the very young children, unable to work, were killed for ethical reasons. The pride with which the sinister character said these words caused the guards to beat him after interrogation. In November 1947, Rudolf Haas was sentenced to death by hanging along with 20 other Nazi officers. The man who arranged the calculated death of millions and who carried out Adolf Hitler's bloodiest dream, died hanging by his neck, looking into the face of the survivors he had not been able to kill. Thank you very much for joining us until the end. Stay tuned for our next video.